Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa and Mummy. <laughs> Assemblymember Wilmer Amina Carter represents the 62nd District and serves as the Assistant Majority po Policy Leader for the State Assembly. She chairs the Select Committee on the Inland Empire Transportation, serves on the California Workforce Investment Board, and promotes sustainable communities through green jobs, training, and neighborhood gardens. And served 16 years on the Rialto School Board. In fact, the high school in, in Rialto was named out in her honor for her dedication to her students and the education in Rialto. Please welcome her. She's going to give us our keynote address today. Good morning to our platform guest and to the graduates of 2011. Good morning to you. I am so honored to share this day with you, but really, Commencement at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> I'm sure that it's just a reminder of all the early mornings, late nights, and skip lunches that brought you here. But also a reminder of all the hard work and sacrifices that you made. Whether it's anthropology, history, economics, philosophy, or political science. <laughs> Earning your degree today shows that you have the creativity and the tenacity to succeed in the complex world ahead. One of the prerogatives of being a graduate graduation speaker is getting to share a lifetime of experiences and ideas. In the African American community, there is the principle of Sankofa. Sankofa says that in order to move forward, we must also remember who we are and how we got there. The symbol of Sankofa is a bird walking forward and looking backwards at the same time. All of us with our diverse backgrounds and personal histories must acknowledge our past and learn from it. I was born in the southern part of this United States. My grandfather was a farmer, and I was last of the grandchildren born in my grandfather's house. When I was born in the South, I could not go to school with people who were not the same color as I. So my grandfather was my first teacher. He built a church with three other families on his property, and he taught school in that church. He started teaching me when I was three years old. He said, I'm going to teach you to read. I'm going to teach you to serve. And what I want you to do is use your education for service. He said, I don't want you to allow your color nor your gender to get into the way of you getting an education. Because if you get an education, you can do anything in this country that you want to be. And so I always remember what my grandfather told me, and I've always gone that way. And throughout my journey, I've always honored my grandfather and all who helped to shape me and who put me on their shoulders so I could rise above. And I've always tried to make room on my shoulders for others, and I hope you will do the same. So honor the past and learn from it. You must also take on the present. You must engage the present and improve it. I believe you're committed to doing just that, or you wouldn't be in the schools of humanities in the first place. Look at the advances we have seen in the past few years in technology. If only there had been similar advances in humanity. We're faster, more connected, and more easily entertained. We have iPads, iPods, Twitter, Facebook, but are we better, smarter, kinder, more compassionate, more aware of the beauty to be found in art and nature? Is it progress when our politics are dominated by talk radio and our culture seems overrun with reality shows? I think you can do better. I hope that you will do better. The toughest job you have and I know it will be spread over many disciplines, is to make sure life in a world filled with technology 
doesn't suffocate our humanity. So I ask you to engage the present and improve it. And then there is the future. You have to imagine the future and then forge it. When I served on the school board in Rialto, I was fortunate enough to have the board name a high school in my honor, the Wilmer Amina Carter High School. So I get an opportunity to speak to the students each year. Two years ago, I said to them that they would be world citizens, and I encouraged them to study math and science, learn at least a minimum of three languages, and learn to communicate with the world. This past year, I encouraged them to do the same and do more because they would be the generation that would navigate galaxies. And I said that, and I told them the story about my grandfather saying that if I got an education, I could do anything in this country. Isn't that the equivalent of so many decades ago of his message to me and my message to them? So I invite you to keep open to new ideas and new experiences. Keep growing, keep learning, and keep seeking. Because gadgets are great, but it takes people to invent, it takes people to build, and it takes people to inspire. And you have to be those people. Inside of each of you is the most valuable technology the world has ever seen, heart and soul mind, and spirit. You owe it to yourselves and everyone who loves you and supports you and wants you to be the best, to use that technology to go as far as you can and take as many others with you as you go. So let me say again, honor the past and learn from it. Embrace the present and improve it. Imagine the future and forge it. UC Riverside graduates 2011, I wish for you blessings without number and all good things without end. Congratulations to each and every one of you.